and obviously malaria, which causes more than a million deaths each year, up to 80% which are under, uh, in children under five. And with increasing temperatures, malaria is returning to places where it was once eliminated. Next slide. 2.1 million children under five die from acute respiratory illnesses. And obviously, burning fossil fuels can drop air quality in rural and urban areas. Next slide. One very common reason for non-attendance is the deterioration of child health and nutritional status. For example, undernutrition strongly affects primary education, primary school enrollment in Ghana. In the aftermath of disasters, children may be pulled out of school and put to work to help their families recover. The Stern Review estimates that the outcome of carrying on with business as usual would be catastrophic resulting in an economic collapse akin to the cost of fighting two world wars and the 1930s stock market crash combined. This impoverishment would mean public and private lower expenditures on goods that improve health, such as safe water, food, education, and basic sanitation. Next slide. So, the basis for actions, rights, institutions, and guiding principles these are some of the conventions and the principles, obviously, that guide us as we go forward and take action. And already, as outlined through UNEP, I think the effort of all in terms of adaptation measures has to be given far more important importance in the agenda uh, as much as mitigation efforts. Next slide. Obviously, Agenda 21 and still um, the, the impact at, uh, of, at that time and with adopted by more than 178 governments. And obviously principle 10, environmental issues are best handled with participation of all concerned citizens. Next slide. Obviously that that guides UNICEF's work in terms of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which is the most widely ratified convention in the world which does outline in terms of the, um, the protection of children from harmful, um, any harmful means and the rights to life, survival and development. Next slide, please. The Aarhus Convention on Access to Information, Public Participation and Access to Justice in Environmental Matters. Next slide. And obviously the framework on the Convention of Climate Change in terms of education, training, public awareness, public participation, and access to information, Article 6. Next slide. In terms of the impact on achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, on every single MDG, there will be impact in terms of their achievement. And going forward, even if they are achieved, if we don't, plan for their achievement in a far more sustainable way. Uh, in particular, in Africa, food security is expected to worsen, thus impacting significantly on MDG1 in terms of extreme hunger and poverty alleviation. Next slide. In terms of universal primary education on loss of livelihood assets and gender equality on depletion of natural resources and agricultural pro productivity, which places additional burdens on women. And these are some of the aspects, too, that need to be addressed in terms of local community-based management programs that address some of these needs and involve local people and obviously take forward the policies and actions to the local level in terms of what can be done. Next slide. In terms of child mortality, to ensure access to adequate health services, and in terms of improved access to sanitation, water, and hygiene, maternal health, where children and pregnant women are particularly susceptible in the strengthening of health services and distribution of malaria uh, uh, prophylaxis. Next slide. HIV, malaria, and other diseases. Uh, in increased vector-borne response to these diseases as and when they occur. And obviously, how Goal 7 will be impacted, and more and more we see 
and, uh, and know that the impact on water is being felt not just in developing countries, but it's being felt through the developed world today. The, next slide. The partnerships as we go forward is crucial and how we work together in terms of adaptation and mitigation strategies is extremely important. The key interventions in terms of household water supply, groundwater recharge and watershed remediation, disaster risk reduction and preparedness, environmental protection and restoration, renewable energy solutions, health-related interventions, community capacity building, and social protection and psychosocial support that's necessary. Next slide. The activities that really can involve young people is also crucial in terms of life skills-based intersectoral environmental education, the aspects in terms of disaster preparedness that are very simple and can involve young people and communities, and the vocational training in trades to address environmental degradation. Next slide. Adaptation activities can, be, can happen in schools, health centers, households, community level, in terms of alternative energy, alternative water source development, microshed management, and alternative energy uh, options that can be encouraged. Next slide. So we know that the impacts on children are documented, documented and they're supported by data. Children can be involved and should be involved in terms of, of making changes, encouraging changes at the local level and the testing of those plans, their involvement, young people's involvement for me, it was quite significant to see within Bali the group that had led, the young people group that had led the, the young people's involvement in Rio were now running local action movements in many countries to take forward uh, Agenda 21. Next slide. And communities' involvement to take anything in terms of adaptation measures down to the local level to ensure that at the end, that these approaches are sustainable is extremely important rather than top-down, top-heavy approaches that will not sustain in the longer term. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. The frameworks for action in terms of national adaptation programs of action and bringing this forwards in terms of strategies, the use of relevant traditional knowledge and practice, the Hyogo framework of disaster preparedness and mitigation. And this, the energy and momentum and preparedness when the number of disasters in, is increasing rapidly and countries' abilities to respond as quickly as possible is a major challenge. Next slide. And child-friendly city initiatives and strengthen the link and can really realize um, the capacity in terms of ability for adaptation and preparedness. So in summary, the conclusions are that the centrality of children to the discussion of climate change and to human security is paramount. Children's issues are not well recognized or incorporated in environmental agendas, but they are key agents for social change. Climate change is inextricably linked to the broader sustainable development agenda for children, poverty, reduction, and the MDGs. There is a lack of, of accurate age-specific data on children and the impact of climate change at the present time, but much of the health risk posed by climate change can be avoidable or curable. A human rights-based approach necessitates inclusion of children's issues and their agenda needs to be integrated into relevant intergovernmental processes. And many opportunities exist to generate support for community empowerment, shared learning between countries and communities, and field activities designed for results. Thank you.